Don't forget to check out the website, guys. Be sure to buy yourself some of my awesome merch to rock up to the car boots in. And also check out the helpful guides and blog posts. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. Now you might be wondering, why are we on the computer? Why are we on Photoshop? This doesn't seem like your normal reselling related video. Um, well, basically a while ago, I got a request from someone off Instagram. Now, of course, if you've been um, with my channel for quite a long time, you will know that I've done a few of your requested videos over the course of the channel. Um, there was a time where actually over a period of a few months, I did about four or five of your requested videos. I really enjoy doing them because it takes the weight of actually getting a video idea or um, anything like that. It takes that off my plate. So, for example, I mean, with the sales updates and haul videos, I can generally, you know, the ideas just come for them because the content's already there. But with other videos that I do, I generally have to put a bit more thought into the ideas. So, you know, the topics I'm covering or the tips videos or the, the courses that I've done in the past or the comedy shorts or the songs or whatever it may be. Um, so it's nice because it, it alleviates that pressure of actually finding a video idea um, and then it's a win-win really for both me and obviously the consumer of the video because um, I obviously get um, an easier ride with it in terms of, of thinking of ideas and stuff and uh, the people who obviously wanted that um, video have got that as well and can hopefully learn something from it so yeah it's quite nice when I get video suggestions so if you do want to send any suggestions in drop them in the comments down below go over to my Instagram you know you can message me over there um, as well if you'd like a more direct or personal experience um, and I'll get on and, and hopefully do that video as quickly as I can regrettably I haven't um, actually got on and done this video very quickly for this person who messaged me about this video generally because it's not a reselling related video and I, I was thinking I would do it anyway but it's kind of just got got put to the back back of the pile kind of thing but anyway so Photoshop this is how I do my thumbnails it can be quite daunting it can be quite challenging there's a lot to learn with it I just do things my own way on Photoshop. I do not know everything. I do not know how to do all the different things on it or anything like that. But what I can do on Photoshop satisfies my needs and, um, you know, uh, what, I, what I basically want and what I need. So um, I'm just going to show you how I do it. Now, there's some uh, with Photoshop, with a lot of the things you can do, there's multiple ways to do them. So, you know, look, look here how I've cut um, this picture of myself out. I actually had that on a different background, which I'm going to show you in a minute once we actually uh, start to con construct this thumbnail here. Um, but that... that uh, that picture that I had on a different background and uh, you can actually use like the pen tool to cut it out um, I use this thing here to cut it out which is the poly I can't even pronounce it polygon go oh, I can't even say it. polygonal lasso tool and that's in the top right hand corner on the toolbar obviously around here um, you can also use in certain circumstances the magic wand tool which just selects the background if you've got like a, a white background or something like that or a green background you know like a green screen background you can just click anywhere on the photo and then click delete and then it will delete all the background but if you've got a more complex background you can't use uh, the quick selection tool or the magic wand tool to do it so quickly and then you have to use uh, another couple of things so there's a few different ways to do like the same thing um, and a lot of people will generally go down the route of uh, you know a lot of people like to say oh it's better to do it this way or this is the right way to do it but to be honest I just say to people do it however you feel comfortable doing it I don't use the pen tool to be honest I've tried it in the past I've like learned it and it's okay I can use it and everything but I just like using this poly lasso tool or whatever it's called. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to actually go through and I'm going to construct this thumbnail here. So, of course, I've already constructed it, but I've got a blank uh, page up here, which uh, we're going to obviously uh, reconstruct it. And I think that's the best way to do it, to give this video some direction. I will say now that this video is probably going to be quite long because I'm going to actually go into a bit more detail 
I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to take you along every step of the way. So hopefully, if you did load up Photoshop, you could actually do this thumbnail for yourself. Um, now, the only thing I'm not going to do, because unfortunately, I didn't even realize how I did it in the first place, is I'm not going to tell you how to do this uh, border, like this thumbnail border here. Because when I actually constructed this border, um, it was one evening, actually, and I was just messing around with Photoshop and for some reason, I managed to get to this border here. And I don't know how I did it. Um, I saved the file, of course, and now I use it repeatedly. But I don't know how I did it. I don't know how I actually got to it. If I had enough time to experiment with Photoshop again for a couple of hours, I could, well, maybe an hour or something, I could probably do it again. I could probably construct it again. But to be honest, I don't know quite how I got to that. So um, I can't really teach you how to do that. But you don't need a border for your thumbnails or anything. That's the only reason I have that is just to signify to people that that is my video. That it, that it like puts your own brand on it. Um, so basically, first off, what you want to do is go up to the left-hand corner, file, uh, and then, is it new? Yeah, it's new. And then come up here, and then what I do is, well, I've already got a preset uh, for thumbnail. You can basically set um, a template of um, how you basically want it to be. Basically, just go down to custom. Then, obviously, the width of a thumbnail for YouTube wants to be 1820. Pick the, uh, sorry, not 1820. Uh, 1280. I don't know why I said 1820, but 1280. Um, and then by 720. And that's pixels. Just leave that at pixels. I just leave the resolution at 72. I go with background, background contents transparent. It's just my my preference um, and then you literally just click OK and then a new window of that exact size that exact thumbnail size will pop open um, but obviously I'm not going to use that because I've already got a few you know a few different ones open so we are here we are presented with our blank screen um, now what I wanted to just touch on very briefly is layers so you can see down here we've got one layer for this specific thumbnail which is of course um, this template here but if I go back onto this one, we've got in the right-hand corner down here about five, four, well, what, four or five different layers. Now, this is basically like layering a burger. So uh, it's a good anal analogy, that, actually. So you've got the little bun on the bottom. Then you might have either a little bit of sauce or, or the actual burger patty itself. Then you might have lettuce, tomato, onion, a bit of sauce on the bun on top, and then obviously with the bun on top there. So you've got like five different layers, and then it's like a, a layered sort of sandwich like that. So it's the same with this, really. So if we look at this as layers, as, as certain different parts, we can see that we've got um, here, we've got a text layer, we've got the background layer here, we've got the, the image of myself, which is this layer here, we've got the arrow layer here, and we can actually organize these by how far we want them to appear so for example if I wanted the arrow out of this thumbnail you could either just click delete on your keyboard or um, if you maybe wanted it behind the background for whatever reason you could drag this down with your mouse drag this top layer of the, the arrow down right below the background and you can see it's popped out of the thumbnail now it hasn't like disappeared or anything really it's just that we've layered it below the background so the background is now above it in terms of layering so imagine that the arrow is now the bottom of the burger bun and then the the background is now like the patty or the, or the source of a patty level and you see that and then you know the top layer which is now uh, turns out to be my little sort of uh, figure or screenshot there is now like the top bun that's like right at the top right at the front so that's kind of layering and you can basically just put them in any order you want so now what i've done is i've just dragged my little image there below the thumbnail background and you can see that's actually put my image below the uh, thumbnail border there so that's pretty cool and then i can flip it back so that then it's above the border so you see what i mean with the layering it, it's not too hard um but now i'm just going to reorder that put that back up there like that so we've got the the arrow back in its place so you know it's not too bad it seems pretty easy right it's not it's not too uh 
crazy. Now, on Photoshop, you have what's known as keyboard shortcuts, and with loads of different programs, softwares, and stuff, you have keyboard shortcuts as well. So we have, you know, various different keyboard shortcuts. I'm not going to go through them now. What I'm going to do is, as I'm compiling the thumbnail, I'm going to go through them with you. So, first off, we need to find this image. So I'm now going to start the constructive process or the construction of the thumbnail. So we've got, we need this image here, right? So I got that image, and this is the lazy man's way of doing a thumbnail, where you basically try and find a freeze frame on your video uh, that looks kind of okay. Then you obviously uh, copy that freeze frame and then put it into Photoshop as a thumbnail. Um, now, generally, what you should do is what I've already got. Well, I say you should do. It doesn't really matter. It, there's no correct way to do it, really, but... This is what most people do. I've got a file with thumbnail blanks in. And these are where I've specifically stood in front of my green screen or in front of, you know, something that uh, doesn't have too much, many obstacles in the background because it's easier to cut those kind of pictures out in Photoshop. Um, I literally stood in front of my green screen doing a load of different poses specifically for thumbnails. That's the better way to do it. Um, but... For this video, I actually found quite an okay freeze frame, and I thought, you know what, I'm feeling a bit lazy today, let's just do it this way. So, um, and also, I've used up quite a lot of the thumbnail templates at this, and I don't want to just recycle them all the time, so I actually need to get, get in front of my green screen again, and do some more actual specific thumbnail blanks. So, now what we want to do, I'm just on VLC Media Player, so if you'd, maybe you want to do like a specific thumbnail blank um, for a thumbnail or maybe you can find one one little section of your video um, but now you want to press print screen on your keyboard so that's print screen and then we want to go back over to photoshop now this is where the keyboard shortcuts come in so we want to press Control v so that then that will paste it into photoshop and then Control t and this brings up the ability to actually resize the image now you want to go up to the top left hand corner um, if your image is too big of course unless it perfectly fits in there then it's okay you want to hold down shift on the keyboard because this maintains the image images resolution it doesn't like flatten it or anything or make it a weird uh you know sometimes if you don't like if you don't use shift it can like well actually you know what i'll do i'll show you so if i don't use shift and then do this you see what I mean? It like it distorts the image. So if I go up here to edit and then just click undo and then undo. Oh no, undo. I can actually use the keyboard shortcut. So Alt Control Z to undo. Oh, it's not even. It's not even responding for some reason. Undo. Yeah, it's not letting me go back for whatever reason. So I'm just gonna delete that and then click Control V. Just put it back in. Again, just so that then it saves me time messing about. Um, so, basically, you want to hold shift, otherwise your image gets, like, weirdly distorted a little bit. Um, you want to keep, you want to maintain that resolution. So, hold shift and then just go down like that very easy. Um, then let go of shift and then put it back up here. And then you can see that's not quite the right size, so I just want to do that again. Um, actually, that's a little bit too small now. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything. I don't get it perfect because if I were to drag this layer up here in the bo uh, to bottom right hand corner here, you can see that as long as it's within that border, it doesn't matter. Now you can see, one sec, undo that. Um, you can see, yeah, it's still a bit off, so I need it a bit bigger. There we go. That's right. Right. So that's cool. So you can see within the border, it's looking pretty cool there. So I'm going to drag this up again because we don't want the border for now. I'm actually going to drag it out anyway because just realized I need this full screen as it is really just to work with it better. So, um, yeah. So we've got that, that sorted now. Now what I want to do is we don't want this background, right? Because we can clearly see that on this thumbnail... That background isn't there. It's a completely different background. So we want to cut this guy out. We can either use a pen tool or we can use the one that I like, which is the poly lasso -y tool thing. So you're going to come up here to the top right, select poly lasso tool or however it's even pronounced. Then we want to click control and then the uh, plus key on your keyboard. The minus key basically zooms out and the plus key zooms in. So we're going to zoom in a little bit. And then what we're going to do is actually cut this figure out of the background. So you see this, you know, this is a very, very 
basic tr trick in Photoshop. You see this with a lot of things. A lot of people do this, of course. And then I'm just going to slowly cut around it. Now, I am going to speed this up a little bit, but I will go through the first little bit with you. So you just want to click down there and then slowly click around the image. It does not have to be perfect. I don't get it perfect. Um, you know, if you're using the pen tool, um, I know sometimes people can't get it perfect with that either. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect or anything, just good enough, basically. So I'm going to go around it now and I will uh, be back in a second once I've completed this. <laughs> Right then, I am just finishing up now. Um, basically, I've just gone around the entire uh, figure and I'm just joining up the edges now. So it's like a, a full uh, cut. So you can see now, obviously, we cut that out. Um, I've, you know, I've just done it very roughly, really. There's a few places where I might have gone slightly out and I might have gone slightly in. But that doesn't uh, matter too much. To, so don't worry if it's not perfect or anything. Then we want to right click inside the selection and click uh, layer via cut. And then that will give us a new layer with that figure cut out of the background. So now we want to select down here on the background layer or the, the previous layer. And uh, just click delete on your keyboard. And you can see there the figure has now been cut out, which is pretty cool. But you can also see if we zoom in, control and plus on your keyboard again. Uh, you can see down here uh, we've got a couple of bits where it's actually... Um, obviously the, there's still some background left in there um, and I'm going to use the quick selection tool because that probably worked now yeah there we go so it selected that inside there I'm going to just click delete there um, and then let me choose the magic wand tool to do this little bit in here so you can see that's just so I'll, I'll zoom in a bit more so you can see that selected that tiny little bit that's just in there and then we just click delete there it's not too much trouble and then again I'm going to just click this the rectangular marquee tool and just select outside the area so then it deselects that selection there now what you can see is that looks like a pretty good cutout doesn't it of that image however when we put the background in right now it's not going to look as good because there's going to be areas where it needs touching up a little bit. So I will be doing a little bit of touching up in a sec. So um, what we're going to do is put this background in now. So you can see there's this ni nice background in, in there now. So I also have a folder on my computer for thumbnail backgrounds. So if we go up here, top right, thumbnail backgrounds. And I have loads of them in here. I actually need to update this and get some new ones in here. You can see that it's this one down here. Now you might be thinking, oh, that's actually the wrong colour. Well, I actually adapted the colour in Photoshop uh, for the background, and I'm going to do that in a minute for you to actually show you what I mean by that. Now, this is a smaller image, so again, we need to click Control and T on the, uh, the keyboard to paste that in there. Again, I've just clicked Control and V on the keyboard to actually get paste it into Photoshop. So Control and uh, and T on the keyboard uh, to get these uh, movements up, and then you can obviously resize the image. So we're just going to do it something like that doesn't have to be perfect again uh, I'm just going to select the move tool at the top there move it into position a bit more um, so yeah basically uh, now what we want to do is we want to move these layers above the background so that then they appear above the background like that right so now you can see that there are a few areas where it's not been the best cut out we can see you know there's bits and bobs around here around the hat and stuff where we can see it's not been uh, the greatest cut out so what I'm going to do is just very very easily and very gently uh, just use the eraser and just erase round a little bit you know if you want to be perfect you can be but really it doesn't it doesn't matter so much you know I'm just going to take off a few bits and bobs you can see there's a few bits and bobs coming off here the, uh, the ears are okay yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect we're fine that's fine. I'm happy with that. You can touch it up in different ways. You don't have to do the eraser. Um, but I just like touching it up a little bit with the eraser if I've not done a brilliant job with actually getting it uh, properly sorted. So we can see on here that this guy is above the layer. I say this guy as if it's some different guy, but it's actually me. Um, and I think he's a little bit bigger. Or I'm a little bit bigger, I should say. Yeah, a little bit bigger, I think. So we're going to... 
put him a little bit bigger like that. And also I am um, like a little bit on the side. I'm a little bit tilted. So if we maybe do about that. About that. And I think I'm a little bit bigger still actually. Thumbnail. Do, do, do. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. That's gonna be pretty decent. Now what we can do is I'm gonna cut. Uh, I'm gonna click twice on this layer here, and we can do some like uh, kind of just little touches up and stuff. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a stroke to this. Now, it doesn't look very good in black. So, what I'm going to do is click on the stroke. Um, I'm going to actually um, click on a white stroke. And I'm also going to put it on in the center because that will look a little bit better. So, you can see where we had those bits of, um, uh, you know, those bits that were around that maybe needed touching up a little bit and we couldn't really do that much with the eraser or it was getting a bit hairy with the eraser anyway um it, it kind of covers that up quite well um now the only thing that i can see which is a bit annoying is down here the stroke is maybe a little bit too much i'm not sure why that is but what i might do is double click on the layer again go to the stroke and maybe just put the stroke down to two anyway oh What's that? I need that on two. What's one like? Yeah, I'm going to go two. I don't know why that's necessarily so chunky around there, but it doesn't matter too much for, for the thumbnail overall, really. Um, and then I'm going to do a uh, outer glow. So I'm going to select outer glow. I'm going to come up here to white. So I'm selecting that as white again. And then this will just basically give a glow. So what I'll do is put the size up for you. You can see that there's going to be a glow around it. Um, but I'm not going to do it that crazily. Uh, and I'm going to put this up to about 20 odd. I'm going to put the opacity up to 100 so then it's more definable. Um, and we're going to do... Yeah, about about that, I would say. I think that might be a little bit more defined than on the other one, yeah. So I think maybe I'll just put it down a little bit. So go back to Outer Glow and put it down maybe to 6. Something like that. That'll do. So... We want to go back to the background now, so we go back to the selecting the background layer, and then we click Control and U on the keyboard. Control and U will get this hue and saturation uh, panel, and then we just want to slide that right to the bottom, and you can see that that gives us a similar colour to that background there. But also, with the other one, I did uh, added up the saturation a little bit, so I think I did it maybe like 30 odd or something, so I'm just going to do that, and then we're similar to that there um you know it's not exactly the same but it's very similar so next we want the arrow in so i've just gone on uh, google and then typed in red arrow and then i am selecting this one here is that the right one feels like there's another one but i'm not sure maybe it is this one uh let me go back up to it here so i'm gonna copy that and then put it into photoshop now for some reason i don't know why but I can't seem to get that. I must. I'll have to flip it round. I think. Uh, rotate 180. Will that do it? Nope. Um, rotate 90. Hmm. For whatever reason, it won't go round the other way. Flip horizontal. There. There we go. Right. That's it. Perfect. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to literally do do do. Go to Magic One Tool, select that, select that uh, by holding Shift, and then uh, delete that. Click outside of the um, image, so then you can get rid of that selection. And then I'm just going to basically increase the size of this. What's it looking like on that other one? Yeah, it's a bit like that in it, so... Maybe decrease the size a little bit. And then, hmm, don't know, maybe it's like that, yeah, similar, similar, but not quite, ok, 
going to just do it like that anyway, that'll do. Um, and then I'm going to cl double click on that arrow layer. I'm going to add a bevel and emboss to it, which will just kind of, it'll, it'll give the illusion that it's kind of raised up. And then I'm going to uh, add a stroke to it as well. And I'm going to add um, up that stroke a little bit. So I'm going to do that. You can see there's a few little bobbles. Sometimes this does happen. There's a few little bobbles around the stroke. So I'm just going to go to the eraser and then just erase some of them. There we go. Right, there we go. Right. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to just maybe change the size somewhat. Maybe do something like this. Yeah, about that. So that's pretty decent there. I don't mind the look of that. And then we just want to get this hull um, in here. So we want to go down to the text tool here. Click in, uh, you know, the area that you want your text. And then I'm going to put caps lock on. Uh, and then I'm just going to put haul, right haul in there. Then you want to go back up to the move tool. Um, and then I'm just going to move it in here anyway. Control and T on your keyboard. Then hold down shift again. And like sort of make it the size you want it. Just going to go in a little bit there. So that's okay there. Now I'm going to double click on the haul, uh, on the haul layer. Uh, the text layer, then I'm going to add a stroke, I'm going to add a bevel and emboss, uh, I'm going to actually, yeah, I'm going to make the depth really, really good on that be bevel and emboss as well, I'm going to add the stroke, as I said, I'm going to select a colour overlay, which is this red, that I really do like the look of, I think I might add up the uh, yeah, I might add up the stroke a little bit, not too much. Going to go down to drop shadow. Going to change the opacity to 100%. Going to um, put a little bit of a uh, drop shadow in there. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, about that. Quite like that. Um, and then that's about it, is it? Yeah, that's about it. Now, you may be wondering... Why is this thumbnail suddenly really, really bright and in your face compared to the other one? Well, for whatever reason, and I don't know why this is, must have been a key that I touched on Photoshop and it's, uh, and I don't know how to get it back. But basically, this thumbnail was as bright as this one. But for some reason this morning, um, it went really, really dull. And I think I've pressed a key on my keyboard that has turned like, the coloration off or turned it in you know turn the coloration different i'm not sure so this thumbnail should be as bright as this one um but for whatever reason it isn't now also there's something else you can do you can go down to um this layer down here which is your you know your figure layer um the the um you know the person layer and go to filter, go to sharpen, go to unsharp mask. I have my radius on 59%. Sorry, my radius on 2.7 pixels. My amount on 59%. You can always adjust that if you'd like to. Um, and then just literally click OK. And then that just sharpens up the image a little bit. You don't have to do that. You know, it's your per personal preference. Then what you can do is you can go Control U on the keyboard again for the figure layer again, this person layer. And I'm just going to add up the saturation a little bit. You can see I'm kind of giving myself a bit of a tan there, uh, cheating a little bit. Um, and then that is basically your thumbnail done. Um, it's not too bad. It's not too hard. Pretty okay thumbnail. I am going to just do a little bit of moving around because it, it just uh, some little bits to me don't look brilliant. Right, that's better. Um, I'm going to do maybe... Increase the size of this guy here, but maybe put him down a bit like that. That's cool. I like that. Uh, one sec. Just need to control and T. Just, just you know, little adjustments that you want to make. Um, I'm just going to select the eraser again and just select if it'll let me. There we go. That's it. That's what I wanted to do. Just get those little bobbly bits of that stroke off. Yeah, I'm happy with that now. Right, so that's that there. 
Um, now what I do, sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. Control, Alt, Alt, Shift, E. So Control, Alt, Shift, E on your keyboard. And then that'll create a merged layer of all of the different layers. So it'll create a layer that's basically one solid picture or one solid Im image. You take that right to the top and then you can go Control and U on the keyboard. You can, well, if you wanted to, I suppose you could add up or dis detract the brightness. Um, no, actually, you know what I want to do? I'm going to delete that layer because there's something else I normally do first. Well, sometimes I go right down to the background layer and then I go Control U on the keyboard and then sometimes I just darken it a little bit. Not by much, but a little bit, like tiny bit, uh, you know few a few minus you know um and then that just darkens it a bit and then it brings out the other the other aspects of the thumbnail a bit more then i do control alt shift e uh, which will create a merged layer then you take that right to the top so then it's the, the layer that's right at the top and then you can add up a little bit more saturation if you really want to but it doesn't really need it on this thumbnail to be honest uh, but i just like adding up the saturation and stuff on thumbnails and that is basically it. And then what we can do is go up here to file. We can go, I do save for web. Go to save for web. Uh, JPEG maximum quality uh, 1280 by 720, which is the thumbnail size that we want. Click save. Click. Uh, I just want to. I'm going to actually save this one as that one. And then what we can do is we can go into my thumbnails thing here. And we can go this one here, isn't it? Open that up. And we can see that that is the thumbnail there. And it's looking not too bad. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. It but it looks like a little bit... Um, yeah, I don't know. Something on the figure just makes it... It just feels a little bit blurry or something. I'm not sure. That could just be attributed to, to, to that photo specifically, though. So, also, what you can do just to check that the thumbnail is going to look okay in search, you can, like, test it out like that or like that or whatever. And if it looks okay, so you know, like, because... Because on your thumbnails on your computer, they're not... They're going to be quite small. People aren't going to be able to view them, like, really big like this. Um, you know, people aren't going to look at that. On the YouTube search, it's going to be more like that, or may maybe that, but probably that. Um, so you know, it looks okay to me. I'm I'm happy with that, um, and that's why you want to do kind of pretty big text, um, and then basically, yeah, that that's what you can do with that. And if you really wanted to, um, in you know, just before you finish doing the thumbnail. Um, also, obviously, with YouTube, that little um, timestamp thing appears in the bottom left-hand corner. So. On a thumbnail, you don't want to put text in the bottom right-hand corner. Otherwise, it'll get covered up by the little timestamp that YouTube put on it. Um, like, how long is this video, etc. So, um, yeah, don't put text in the bottom corner. Or else the little thing that says 10 minutes and 7 seconds will appear over it. And it'll kind of ruin the thumbnail. Um, but that should be fine for this thumbnail because the, the thing will just uh, come down here. So, with that being said, I'll leave it there. Uh, that is how you do thumbnails. Well, that's how I do thumbnails, not how you do thumbnails, but how I specifically do my thumbnails. I know it was quite a long one, so I apologise. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it at that. Don't forget, if you uh, like video, please do like it down below. Subscribe to the channel for more content about reselling and all the rest of it. And uh, any comments, questions or queries, drop them down below. And I will see you in the next one. So I will see you very soon, guys.